And today we're going to go over this um, flow chart that we use in class. You may not want to use it in other facilities, but um, students and I put this together for the testing that we actually do in class. So it may not be all inclusive just because there, um, you know, if you're working at a clinical facility, they have more testing than we do. So um, this is just what we came up with to use in class. So the the organisms that we're looking at are going to be the first two sets of organisms that we use in class. Um, the first grouping has a gram positive and a negative cocci and the gram negative cocobacilli. And we just went through in another video showing you what they look like on um, triplates like this, okay? And uh, so what we're thinking about here is going to be your straps, your staphs, your micrococcus, and your enterococcus and gram-positive cocci. Gram-negative cocci, you're thinking Neisseria and Moraxella cauterales. Gram-negative cocobacilli, you're thinking uh, Haemophilus, okay? And uh, gram-negative rods, we're thinking families of and the family of Enterobacteraceae along with non-fermenters. And those are what we use in class. The only non-fermenter we use is um, Pseudomonas originosa and all the rest of them we uh, use Enterobacteraceae family. Um, but on the flow chart there are other organisms that I have represented as well just so that you know you can use it in um, theory as well. Okay so what we're looking at first is what did they grow on in the primary setup and uh, what is the gram stain? All right, so if we have um, ones that grow on blood and chocolate, just like we showed in another video, we're thinking of gram-positive and gram-negative cocci, okay? When we're looking at chocolate only, that's when we're thinking of that homophilus, okay? And then when we look at growth on blood with hemolysis and on MAC, that's the GNRs, okay? Um, and so, you know, like E. coli and the rest of the family, Enterobacteraceae. So the next thing that we do is catalase, okay? Depending on that result depends on which way we're going here and what the gram stain was. Okay, so if it's gram positive, or sorry, <laughs> if it's catalase positive, then we're looking at um, these sorts of organisms. We're looking at um, the gram negative cocobacilli, so we're thinking the homophilus, gram negative cocci, so we're thinking Neisseria and Moraxella, and uh, gram negative rods, we're thinking Enterobacteraceae and the non fermenters. Uh, the gram positive cocci that we're looking at here would be Staphylococcus and Micrococcus, okay? So then the next one that we would go to would be coagulase, all right? talk about that in just a second. Um, the negative catalase are going to be your streptococcus and your enterococcus, gram-positive cocci, okay? So um, let's start with strep first since we're here, okay? So the next thing that we do is we look at the types of colonies. So strep are usually pinpoint to small gray and white colonies or gray to white colonies. They might not even have much color, and um, they might have some type of hemolysis, okay? So the ones that do have hemolysis, we're going to end up doing, well, actually, we in class, we just do all of them do PYR, just to get you used to the test and to see how all of this tracks. In reality, you won't necessarily um, always do PYR, okay? So for right now, we're just talking about doing it all the time in class, uh, just to make sure you get those reactions and you can follow them in your practice unknowns in your test, okay? Um, so PYR, um, if it's positive with hemolysis, we're concerned that either it's strep pyogenes, okay, or enterococcus, okay? Um, those are the ones that are, we're really um, worried about in regard to um, them being positive with PYR and uh, beta hemolytic. As you'll see, group B strep is beta hemolytic, but it's PYR negative, okay? So usually we're just trying to distinguish between is it enterococcus or is it going to be um, strep pyogenes, which is the cause of strep throat. Okay, so bioescalin, um, it's a slant that we use in class, and uh, we're going to use that as the definitive piece between um, these two genera, um, genus, 
and um, the pyogeny species, okay? So positive uh, bioescaline hydrolysis is going to be enterococcus. We have only fecalis in class and uh, a negative, um, so no blacking of the slant would be the strep pyogenes. That's in another video too if you wanna see that. And there is more of an explanation of when do you actually do PYR. So basically, in a clinical setting, you only do PYR if you have um, the sus suspicion that it's um, of these two, okay? So PYR negative, we're looking at then what kind of homolysis did we have? If it's alpha or gamma, we do the bioescaline, okay? And if it was beta, we're going to do the CAMP test. So the CAMP test is going to be um, is going to be uh, where you have the line of Staphylococcus aureus in the middle. And again, we have another video that does that, so you can look at that. Um, and it's going to form an arrowhead if it's actually strep agalactiae, okay? It's also bacitracin resistant. For us, that's the A disc, depends on your manufacturer, okay? So going back to hemolysis, if it's alpha or gamma, um, we are uh, looking at doing bioescaline again, just in case it's enterococci um, or enterococcus. Like we said before, um, you may have a strain of enterococcus that's either alpha, uh, gamma, or beta, and so I'm just covering all bases in this flow chart. Okay, so again, since we're concerned it might be enterococcus, then we're going to do that bioescalant. Um, if it's uh, positive or variable positive, that's when you do a growth, um, whether it grows in sodium chloride or not, okay? We don't do that test in class, um, but uh, so, we, sorry, we don't do that test in class. We don't have um, this organism either in class. So the leucona stock is another um, strep-like uh, organism, but we don't actually do that in class. Um, here you would also look at up to chin for the next one. If it was bioescalin ne negative, um, it may be pneumonia or viridin strep, we have mitis. Okay, so then you're just looking at the susceptibility. And like we said um, in other uh, videos, the strep pneumonia is gonna be sensitive and the um, and here the strep mitis is going to be resistance, which means that it grows all the way up to the disc. Okay, so I know that enterococcus is not in this flow chart right here because the optim optimal thing would be in this one. So I just left it on this side, okay? All right, so let's go um, to the uh, catalase positives. Okay, so if we're looking at gram positive cocci, we're going to then do coagulase. Okay, for if it was gram negative rods or cocoa bacilli or gram negative cocci, next thing you would be doing is the oxidase test. Okay, so let's go back here to the coagulase. We're trying to differentiate between micrococcus and staphylococcus. So the only one of all of those that is going to be positive is going to be your staphylococcus aureus. Okay, it's also beta hemolytic. Um, so coagulase positive is only going to be that staphylococcus aureus. Um, the next um, thing that we would do to the ne coagulase negative um, gram positive cocci that are in pairs, tetrads, or um, clusters are going to be the oxidase test, okay? Micrococcus is oxidase positive and bacitracin sensitive if you were to do the bacitracin disc. Um, the uh, other coagulase negative staph is going to be um, bacitracin resistant and would be oxidase negative, okay? So then we would go down here um, and um, we would look at the novobiosin being um, sensitive for uh, coagulase negative staph, so such as staphylococcus, staphylococcus epidermidis and resistant for staphylococcus saprophyticus. We do not have this one in our classroom, um, but it is a common problem uh, with women who are sexually active. Um, 
It can also be a problem uh, with leaving tampons in too long. Um, so that's what we're thinking about when we think of staph saprophyticus, okay? So then, um, then over here, we're going to look at all the ones that are gram negative that we have, okay, um, in regard to facultative, facultative anaerobes. Um, so then we look at, you know, um, they grew on these different types of plates, okay? Some of them just grew on uh, one, where others grew on two, okay? So we do oxidase, the positive, um, oxidase positive, we're, if you go all the way down to the bottom, we're looking at Neisseria, Moraxella, Cattarales, and Haemophilus, and the non-fermenters, okay? So, um, if it was oxidase positive and it's um, showing different kinds of hemolysis, that ends up being uh, where we go next. So if it's alpha or gamma, uh, we would do the nitrate reduction test, and I did not, I do not have that in class either, um, but Neisseria would be positive and uh, Meroxella catarrhalis would be variable positive. So um, what I would want um, someone to do in class would be to talk about the sugar fermentation, um, sorry, the oxidation of sugars um, for the test to differentiate Neisseria as well as what would the nitrate be. So those would be hypothetical in the test questions that you would have. Okay, with the hemolysis being beta or gamma, we're thinking, and it only grew on chocolate up here. We're thinking hemolysis, sorry, hemophilus, <laughs> and you would do the X and V disc to see what species you might have um, from the stock that we have. I do give um, the organism list to my students so that they know what it could possibly be. Okay, so then if it's alpha, beta, or gamma, and um, it is oxidase positive and does show hemolysis, we're possibly looking at non-fermenters, and these are going to be our um, gram-negative rods, okay? Um, the homophilus is gram-negative cocobacilli, and the gram-negative cocci are going to be your Neisseria and Moraxella cauterelles. So this would be in our second grouping of organisms, and the testing that you would do here um, are the biochemical testing for all our GNRs, which are also represented over here, okay? So that's your TSI slant. Um, uh, I don't think I have all of it listed. The MIO tube and um, citrate and urease and all of those, okay? So when you get to oxidase positive GNRs, um, you're basically going to end up with these results um, where the TSI is going to be alkaline over alkaline. That would show you then that you have your non-fermenters, okay, because they're also oxidase positive, which means they don't ferment, they oxidize their sugars, okay? So that would be your pseudomonas that we have in class. The other ones here, um, you might not be able to see very well, um, but those would be in theory. Okay, for all of these that are oxidase negative, you're looking at your Enterobacteraceae family, then you go and you do all of those biochemical testing that I just said, and we end up with a separation um, between the lactose fermenters and non-lactose fermenters. A way that you can check the between these two is what did your MAC or your McConkie growth look like? If it was pink, then it is a lactose fermenter. If it didn't really change color or was kind of you know, weird looking like a buff color, that's a non-lactose fermenter and you got all those guys here. You can also look at their um, biochemicals and speciate it that way, um, but uh, you know, just that basic thing there, looking at your TSI and your McConkie and making sure that they match would tell you which ones would be where. And so um, with these that I have on the left that are the lactose fermenters, um, you worry about your extended beta lactamase, extended spectrum beta lactamase. Okay, this is not an all-inclusive flowchart, like I said, um, but this is a generalization of how to help 
um, do your lab testing in class with the organisms that we have in regard to your practice unknowns and your exam. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time, bye.